When and why did you decide to become an artist? Um, when I was 16, I did work experience as a, an architect um, in my hometown because I'd been watching documentaries about architecture on TV and I thought that looked interesting and in line with my interest. But that week of work experience was the most dull and boring week of my life. Like, I just saw the reality of designing extensions for people in North Wales. And I thought, I had like a crisis at this giant drawing board where they put me for a week. And um, <clears throat> I think almost there and then I decided that I wanted to be an artist. I realized that I wanted to be able to make things without you know, having to worry where the soil pipe would go so that the toilet downstairs was below the toilet upstairs. You know, I think that's a good metaphor for what I didn't want to do, you know. So. How would you describe your practice? So I'd say my practice is a reactive, kind of almost satirical uh, multimedia practice where I look at things that I've experienced or I kind of ruminate on situations and types of situations and then I make a work as that's a kind of reaction to that in a way often with a narrative and often quite humorous or or you know has bathos or you know like something yeah I've got an interest in the the narrative of, of a piece of work and maybe a little bit of theatricality as well. So I, I certainly couldn't be kept to one medium on its own. What are you currently working on and how does it fit within your broader practice? At the moment I'm working on a project with the Science Museum. Um, they're moving their collection to uh, a new huge aircraft hangar in Wiltshire. And I'm working on a book with some amateur writers and about this collection and the move. And then I'm gonna make a film, which is a kind of exquisite corpse of all these um, short texts that these writers have written. And I've got a particular interest in collections. I've worked with the museums of Cambridge University in the past, um, the zoology collection at Bangor University as well. I'm, I like, I suppose, the stories that are triggered in your mind when you look at like, you know, a stuffed monkey or a, a lamb with two heads in a bell jar, you know, things like that. Uh, or like an old car. You know, for instance, there's, there's like a Rolling Stones tour jet or tour aeroplane from a 1970s tour of the Pacific, just in the collection. And apparently after it was retired from passenger service, they used it to move cattle around Australia so just things like that you know like those kind of stories that are like locked into objects I'm interested in that and places sites you know what is the Amlinechiad outline project for you I think it's an opportunity for you know I don't think of Wales as a particularly visual art kind of place you know it's singing and it's poetry and it's drama maybe literature certainly visual arts you know Welsh people have got like a real obsession with like craft and you know coloured pencil drawings of the Welsh football team and stuff like that I don't sell work in Wales you know and that happens in England not in Wales for me but what Aminetta does I think is it allows you to do something that physically would be too ambitious to realise, but yeah, to, be, to have like a scope and ambition that is totally virtual, you know, that, that is, fits in your pocket. And it's something that I think really suits a country like Wales, because example, if you take S4C, so it's a TV channel that has to appeal to you know, three quarters of a million people or more of different ages with different interests, but there's only one channel and it's not on all night or anything like that. So 
it has problems with viewing figures. But the internet, in a way, is perfect uh, for a minority language or a country that has two languages like that, in that you can come back to things or you can, do you see what I mean? And I think, I think countries that have this kind of dual personality, not, not that there's a separation between English and Welsh, but it's complex. Having more than one language is, makes it complicated. And we know that, that's a fact in Wales. You know, it, it can be a divisive issue. And I think technology is a good way of getting around those issues, you know. And I think this app, yeah, it, it's like putting an exoskeleton on Wales or something to turn it into like a kind of, yeah, some kind of hybrid kind of version of itself, you know. What's unique about Wales that we can accentuate in the Amlinelliad Outline project? I think what is unique is that it doesn't, you know, you can walk around the coastline more or less, and until you get to then, you know, Milford Haven, then Swansea and Cardiff, most of the coastline is fairly low population, low intensity in terms of like industry and stuff like that. I'm not saying that that's a positive thing, but like, I think if you were to like walk all the way around the coast looking at all these things, you're having a much more, uh, like a much closer relationship to nature at the same time as this new technology, you know? Whereas, you know, if you were doing it in England, maybe you would be coming across bigger conurbations every 10, 15 miles or something. I'm not sure, there's like a, a wildness to the Welsh coast, isn't there? Especially the West Coast that is quite dramatic. And um, I think there's that. How can we best use the Welsh and English languages most effectively in the Amlinelliad Outline project? One of my big bugbears with how bilingualism is used in public life in Wales is that you have what I call this kind of Christ so welcome phenomenon where English is uh, spoken first and Welsh almost is like glued onto the end of the sentence, almost like uh, so that it has no inflection or meaning. So I think good bilingual practice is to not always translate literally, but sometimes to try and think, to like author it a bit when you're translating into Welsh, you know, and sometimes maybe to write the copy in Welsh first and then translate it to English instead of it always being the other way around. You know, I'm super proud to be bilingual. And for that very reason, when I see like crap translation, not just inaccurate translation, but like clunky, you know, sometimes I think it's okay to put the odd English word in a Welsh translation if it's to, if it's to do about getting the meaning right. I think like finding some like big, you know, clumsy word that is correct people don't understand it then it's daft you know so yeah it has to make because English doesn't do that English doesn't you know you don't write things in like Chaucer's English when you're describing like you know writing contextual text for a sculpture you know they, English is much more like free and easy isn't it with things Welsh can be a, a bit precious could you share with us what you believe the possibilities are for the Outline and the Nechad project? I think, um, certainly I moved back to Wales in 1999 from London and at the time I wasn't sure if it was a good idea and not many young artists were moving back to Wales and deciding to make careers here. But that's changed in the last 15 years, I'd say, 10, 15 years. And I think that if anything, what Amunetta could do is almost end up being a way of like stringing these kind of disparate practices and artists and makers around Wales together, you know, and giving them a kind of, yeah, like a kind of thing to grab onto or, um, or that they get, kind of get snagged in it in some way.
because that's the problem in Wales is crap transport links, places that are geographically close to each other but have no relationship, um, especially for people in the visual arts because there's not like a touring thing like you have with music. You know, it's easy for artists to feel isolated and I think something that brings it all together on a single platform is, is good. Um, yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, and also like, I don't see why, you know, this is a coastline project, but you could also do the thing with, thing with routes and paths that travel from one end of the country to the other as well, couldn't you? It doesn't have to be just, you know, people in poets could start getting freaked out or like feeling left out or something. You know? so.